the floor to a Colorado American's right to keep and bear arms is that we can own pistols and rifles and shotguns in defense of home, person, and property. That's the floor. That's the bare minimum. That's the bare minimum. We can own pistols, rifles, and shotguns in defense of home, person, and property. Colorado law, it has three, you know, elements. You can defend your home, your person, and your property. When it comes to the home, there's an extreme maximum castle law in defense of home. That's Colorado law. The Colorado law is also an extreme stand your ground in terms of defense of person. And a maximum or extreme right to bear arms in defense of property. Maximum or extreme. But none are absolute. None are absolute. But castle law stands your ground. They are extreme. They're both extreme. But when it comes to the right to bear arms in defense of property, there's one statute that says maybe you should, you know, shouldn't kill everybody that steals property. But property is all over the place. It's in the Constitution. It's in Section 2, the, you know, Article 2, Section 13. And uh, vigil, vigil defense property and Property, both the U.S. Constitution and the Colorado Constitution defends property. So the floor to a Coloradan's right to keep and bear arms. You have a right to keep and bear arms. You have a right to own and carry those guns around. And those guns, at the very least, are pistols, rifles, and shotguns. They've banned assault rifles in, I think they, there's an assault rifle, there's red flag law. I think they banned assault rifles too. But you can own pistols, rifles, and shotguns in defense of home, person, and property. That's the floor. That's the bare minimum. That's the bare minimum. Now, I want to talk about the rights and freedoms that we have as Americans. When it comes to talking about the law, when it comes to talking about the law, you got the legislative code, you got case law, you got, there's lots of different laws. And so it's important to understand that when you put all these laws together, there's the spirit of the laws. And so what does the spirit of the laws of Colorado say? Well, Colorado's got a Bill of Rights. America's got a Bill of Rights. Colorado has a Bill of Rights. So that means we as individual Colorado Americans, we have individual freedoms. And here's just 10 of them, just 10 kind of random of my legal and constitutional rights and freedoms that I have as a Colorado American. I have a right to remonstrate. I have a right to speak. I have a right to peacefully assemble. I have a right to petition. I got a right to religion. I got a right to a jury trial. I got a right to initiative. I got a right to recall. I got a right to security. And I got a right to property. A right to property where the Fifth Amendment, the Fourteenth Amendment, Article 2, Section 3, Article 2, Section 25. The right to property is all over the constitutions. So those are my 10 uh, freedoms. The right to remonstrate, Article 2, Section 24. The right to speak as the First Amendment, Article 2, Section 10, and on and on. And so there are several parallel, you know, laws, right to, you know, petition and assemble and the freedom of the press. So a lot of the same rights and freedoms that is protected under the U.S. Constitution is also protected under the Col Colorado Constitution, which is fantastic. So as a Colorado American, you got two constitutions that say that you got a whole host of freedoms. And according to my calculations, it's about over 70 freedoms. So the above 10 rights that I just said are Colorado law. Let me just say them again. These are constitutional, legal constitutional law. The right to remonstrate, the right to speak, the right to peacefully assemble, the right to petition, the right to religion, the right to a jury trial, the right to initiative, the right to recall, the right to security, and the right to property. So that's all Colorado law. That's all Colorado law. That's in the Colorado Constitution. It's backed up by the U.S. Constitution. Those cannot be fucked with. And that's fantastic, right? We got the right to recall our politicians. We have a right to security, a right to property. And the uh, Constitution of Colorado expands the baskets of in freedoms, uh, rights and freedoms that are already granted to us in the U.S. Constitution. In some respects, Americans are only allowed to demonstrate, but we Coloradans are allowed to remonstrate. So we have an extra freedom when it comes to, we can remonstrate in Colorado. You can't remonstrate in the rest of America, but you can do all the remonstrating that you want in Colorado. While the U.S. and Colorado Constitution 
doesn't enumerate all of our natural rights and freedoms. Natural rights and freedoms are still guaranteed under both the U.S. and Colorado Constitution. As the Ninth Amendment, which comes from the 1791, the U.S. Constitution ratified the Bill of Rights. So the Ninth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution in Article 2, Section 28, which comes from the 1876 Colorado Constitution. So we both have natural rights and freedoms are guaranteed under the Constitution, but they're not spelled out. They haven't been <clears throat> enumerated. That's a big problem. That's a big gaping hole. Do we use the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? Do we use the Bill of Rights for Bolivia or Mexico? Where do we look at, you know, for the rights and freedoms that are our natural rights and freedoms? Well, you can do all, you know, all over the place. Here's eight natural rights that are not found in either U.S. or the Colorado Constitution that are still Colorado law. We have a right to unionize. We have a right to marriage. We got a right to privacy, a right to found a family, a right to food, water, the right to clothing and warmth, and the right to shelter. That's Maslow's hierarchy of human needs. You, If you're, you're cold, get warm. If you don't have a house, get some shelter. You don't have food or water, get some food and water. So these are all natural rights and freedoms that are not spelled out. They're not enumerated in the U.S. or Colorado Constitution, but they are natural freedoms, natural law. So they are a part of Colorado law. Some people might actually think that natural law is above constitutional law. I, however, do not. Natural law would be below constitutional law only because constitutional law allows natural law. So we should really actually just, you needed to enumerate them. That was kind of a slick little thing Alexander Hamilton said. Well, just because we didn't say that a right doesn't exist doesn't mean that it doesn't. It, yeah, it does. It's exactly what you're saying. So what the hell does any of this mean? Well, we have a hierarchy of laws, right? When it comes to what is the law, the Colorado law, you have the code, the Colorado revised statutes. You got case law, all the judicial decisions. You have constitutional law. Then you have, you know, a whole bunch of really, it can kind of come out of thin air wherever, anywhere and anywhere that you have some sort of ethical or legal code. But for me, the hierarchy of laws, the way I understand America and Colorado, is the local in the U.S. and the Colorado Constitution is the top. Natural law is below that. Then the local in the U.S. and the Colorado Code. And then common sense. And then case law. And then administrative regulations, civil criminal procedure, executive orders, international treaties. So the constitutions trump the CRS, KRS, the revised statutes. And the code trumps the case law. So the Constitution trumps the legislative statutes. The legislative statutes trump case law. And so what does that mean? That means I got a right to unionize. I have a right to marriage. A unionize, that means a right to strike too, right? To unionize for collective bargaining. That's the whole point to unionize. The right to privacy, even though it's implied, it's not spelled out. The right to found a family, the right to... Uh, food, water, clothing, and shelter, the right to property, the right to security, the right to recall, the right to initiative, the right to a jury trial, the right to religion, the right to petition, the right to peacefully assemble, the right to speak, and the right to remonstrate. These are all my rights and freedoms. So when you go to put all the law together, that, I would think you'd have to spell that out first to really understand what kind of society. Also, I mean, I, motherfuckers want to be goddamn, you know, hooligan pieces of shit. But if they said, hey, we're going to peacefully assemble, we're going to go petition the government for a redress of grievances, that's much civil, much more respectable, much better than the bullshit that I see around here. So there you go. I have lots of rights and freedoms as a Colorado American. And that's just, you know, that's just how it is. Love it or leave it, motherfuckers. <laughs> it's constitutional. That's bedrock. Hardcore. You can't fuck with constitutional law. 
You, nobody can fuck with constitutional law.